we are two and there are always two ways to look at our existence one is to look at our physical body and say that we are purely physical material who am i this the other way is to see that you are probably not the body rather you are with a body or you have a body don't you say my body you don't say me body out of these two ways the first way is more common more straightforward and easier to take this duality in our existence is the fundamental reason behind all human suffering on one hand there is this pre-programmed body that has its own processes and intentions as well on the other hand there is the invisible consciousness that is related to this body attached to this body but at the same time has an objective very different from that of the body hence the two-ness this two-ness is not greatly experienced by animals it is not experienced by any life form apart from human beings animals really do not have a force of consciousness that may potentially rally or revolt against their physical being or you could say that an animal's consciousness is almost always in agreement with its physical being what the animal's body wants its consciousness readily agrees to if the animal wants to eat because its body its stomach is now in need of food then its mind immediately starts finding ways to get food without questioning without resisting if the body needs food then the only purpose and objective of mind is to seek food that's how an animal lives but in the case of human beings there is a clear dissonance hence i said we are two the body may want one thing but the mind may want something totally different the body may say that i need sleep but the mind may say no i'm in the middle of a movie i want to finish the movie off or the mind may say i'm driving right now i need to complete the journey i can't go to sleep 
or the mind may say i have a very very critical task to complete i cannot go to bed right the reasons that the mind may have may differ in their dimension the mind may say i want to consume hence i don't want to sleep or the mind may say i have a tremendous responsibility i want to be liberated hence i cannot go to sleep whatever be the reason the mind has a certain autonomy the mind has a certain choice potentially that choice is available so there is always an inner conflict the conflict is always between your pre programmed self your prakritic self and the urge of your consciousness for liberation right if you are the physical body the conflict that we just talked of that is sought to be resolved here how if you are the physical body alone then surely anything physical comes from something physical where does anything come from this is a machine it comes from a machine right this is a machine it comes from another machine and that another machine comes from another machine or you could say this is material and all material comes from material right so if you say that you come from physical bodies then what have you decided for yourself in terms of your identity if you say i come from two physical bodies one man one woman then what have you told yourself regarding your identity i am a body i am a body right now there was this conflict am i a body or am i consciousness we said man is characterized by that one conflict am i body or am i consciousness the moment you say i am the son or daughter of two human beings you have settled the conflict in the favor of the body, body. because if i am coming from bodies then i am a body then i cannot argue in favor of consciousness settled game over the upanishad here is decreeing otherwise the upanishad is saying life and the mind and the senses are born from him your life is not coming from two other life forms this existing life form is not coming from two preceding life forms a male and a female no you are actually coming from him now the fact on the ground is as far as your body is concerned it is coming from your father and your mother right and yet the upanishad is saying that no but you are coming from some other father what is the upanishad really saying then you are not the body because we cannot argue against the obvious fact that your body can't come except from two other bodies nobody can debate that right the upanishad is saying still all life and senses really come from him which basically means that you are not the body your real identity is your consciousness and if your real identity is your body then you are an animal because in the case of animal it is very true that the consciousness is not at the central position it is the body that is at the central position animals of one particular species do not usually behave very differently from each other do they why because their bodies are not very different from each other why are two cats not very different from each other in terms of behavior because they are not very different from each other in terms of their body basically their body becomes their behavior 
देर फोर इफ यू आर सम वन हु इज बॉडी सेंट्रिक एंड हुज लाइफ एंड एक्शन एंड थॉट्स एंड इमोशंस एंड बिहेवियर कम फ्रॉम द बॉडी देन यू आर अ कैट आर यू गेटिंग इट हैव यू एवर सीन अ कैट एंड अ डॉग बिहेविंग अ लाइक Why don't a cat and a dog behave in the same way? Because their bodies are different. As simple as that. Why don't a man and a woman among human beings behave in the same way? Because their bodies are different. As simple as that. There is no great or deep reason behind all this. Are man and woman different? Yes, they are. Why? because their bodies are different full stop no the reason will a rabbit and a lion behave the same way why not because their bodies are different so animals are totally captive to their bodies now let's come to human beings do human beings behave greatly differently from each other potentially yes same species yet there can be a world of difference right now that tells you who we really are animals cannot behave very differently from each other human beings can can't we can't we hmm you can have a human being as a krishna and you can have a human being as a kans among rabbits that's not going to happen you cannot have an elevated rabbit like krishna and you cannot have a fallen rabbit as kans you not have that some marginal difference in behavior can be there but not beyond that but among human beings there is the sky and there is the earth do you see this please no you could argue that even that could probably be because of genetic reasons because even in the same species genetic material does differ so maybe krishna was genetically superior compared to kans or not superior let's say genetically different so those genetic differences were dictating the difference in thought and action we can counter that the same person at one moment in his life behaves in a very fallen way indeed a perverse way and that very same person in his same lifetime is capable of behaving in a greatly elevated way have the genes changed what has changed the state of consciousness the state of consciousness now you should know which side you must take are you the body or the consciousness do not go by your desire go by the facts of life the fact of life is that even if you want to consider yourself a body you actually are consciousness your consciousness is central your body is something that you have you are the consciousness you have the body that's the difference you are the consciousness you have the body do you understand this and that's the point the upanishads the rishis are trying to drill into us it's not that the body is not a fact the body is a fact but not the central one the body indeed does exist sure and not only so the state of our body influences the state of our consciousness we know that why does your consciousness start behaving erratically start sinking in fact when you are drunk because something has happened to your physical system and when your physical system is influenced your consciousness also gets influenced doesn't it but in spite of that 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 uh, that correlation 
in spite of uh, that that relationship still consciousness has a certain autonomy are you getting it and that autonomy is your hope your desire it's your last chance that perfect autonomy is what we all are craving for can we have a consciousness that is independent of everything and everything meaning the body nothing else can we have a consciousness that is not dictated by the world when i say the world i mean the body because it's the body that comes into the world agree it the rishis have delivered the verdict here your body may come from your parents but you have not come from your parents and if you have come from your parents then you are a cat you won't want to ascribe that species to your parents right if you are a cat then your parents are so if not for yourself then for your parents avoid being a cat right is that clear you come from your parents only to the extent your body comes from two other bodies but the real you your consciousness does not come from anybody it comes directly from there where we do not know because we do not know because we cannot ever even potentially know we call that brahm consciousness comes from there because we know for certain that our consciousness is not fully tied not not inexorably tied to our body redemption is possible hmm now you also know what is the measure of our humanness the level of your consciousness and how otherwise can you define the level of your consciousness the more your consciousness is free of the impulses of your body the higher is your humanness and the more you live a body centered life the more of an animal you are isn't that very mathematical very obvious very clear hmm? so even if a person is 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 greatly rich or extremely attractive but if that person is living for the sake of the body and what does the body want look at the animals what do they want food shelter shel territorial occupation territorial hegemony hmm control over the tribe so that they can have the best female to mate with all these things so you might be a very influential person in the society but if your influence is only in these dimensions right then you are just a beast just a beast hmm? you may have a great house animals too are looking to expand their territories are they not or your product may have a high market share but that's what animals are also looking for no you might be visiting the best restaurants animals too are quite particular about food aren't they all that does not make you a great human being all that only makes you more of an animal forget about being a great human being you are not even a human being at all the fellow was hungry so he left an imported job aside and started binging and then he got so full 
and so tight and so inflated that he fell asleep. Why call this fellow a man? Call him a cockroach or something or something. I mean, that's not an abuse. That's a fact. Is that not a fact? You are supposed to do something at 11 p.m. tonight. Instead, what did you do? You ate a lot. Because you just cannot manage your physical impulses. And what happened when you ate so much? Why do you carry a name even? Does any animal have a name? Its only name is animal. Human beings have names. Do you understand why human beings have names? Because human beings are potentially different from each other. Animals don't have names because no animal is really different from another animal. One rabbit is not really different from another rabbit. So rabbits, it would be illogical to give them names. But you can give them names if they are your pets. For reasons of fondness, you may give them names. But the fact is one rabbit is not really different from another rabbit. But one man is really different from another man potentially. Actually, one man is not really different from another man because we all behave as per our bodily instincts. But if we do that, then we are not human beings at all and we don't deserve to carry names. Are you getting it?